guys, welcome back to the can channel. This is your host, Chris Cory with Shadows Techland. So I wanted to go over uh, what I use for IPS and IDS. Uh, IPS, that stands for Intrusion Protection System, and IDS, which is Intrusion Detection System. Detection meaning just detection. It, al it informs you, alerts you, and allows you to do user intervention in order to take care of said situation. Intrusion Protection excuse me, prevention will actually prevent it and it will do something about it depending on what rules and situations that you set up in the software. Now, a lot of people will say you can use sort, snort, you can use Certica, you can do a couple different ways. Now, granted, you can install snort and Certica on PFSense, which is basically a software to find UTM. I did do that for a while, but I ran into issues. Chances are it was probably my own fault due to the fact that I don't understand it as much as I would like to. That is something that I am in the process of learning and getting into and uh, definitely will be doing a further deeper dive in. But I decided to go ahead. Now you can install this a couple ways. You can install this through, um, like I said, PFSense or whatever UTM that you're using or you can go ahead and install it in an appliance or you can use um, like an Linux VM you know Ubuntu things of that nature granted that might be easy for some people but my Linux knowledge is very limited I will admit that up front that is something I'm working on it's just something that I haven't spent enough time in in order to learn properly that being said I decided to use snort setup through security onion Security Onion, basically it's a free open source Linux distribution for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. It includes a lot of different pieces of software including Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, Snort, Certica, Zeek, formerly known as Bro, Wazoo, Squill, uh, Cyberchief, Network Miner, and many other network monitoring tools. So basically um, went ahead and downloaded the ISO, uploaded that to Proxmox, and it will def you'll boot into it. You'll install the actual um, operating system, so Snort, excuse me, Security Onion itself, and then you will be brought to your login screen, which I will show you. So you'll be brought to this screen. You'll see a setup here. Now, in order for security onion to work, you need two NICs, whether that's virtual or that's um, physical. It's completely up to whatever your setup is. In my virtual machine, I'm using security onion with uh, four virtual cores and eight gigs of RAM. I do believe it's either eight or 16. It does take quite a bit of RAM in order to run this. Um, CPU doesn't seem to be quite as bad. Obviously your mileage is going to vary depending on how advanced your network is and how much monitoring and what options that you do set up. But you will need two network interfaces. One being the management, which is the interface that is set up in order to um, basically get in, check logging, things of that nature. The second one is the monitoring interfaces, which is what is set up in order to basically reach out to your network and monitor said network of whatever your devices are. You'll go through, you'll do that setup and run through and basically do a couple options and then you'll be brought, once you reboot you'll log back in. Now it is going to give you the option to set up an additional user. I have two users, one being the user which lets me log into the VM itself of Security Onion and then I have a second user set up, which is an admin user that is allowed to get in and actually do the monitoring itself. So if you'll go ahead and open up Kibana, you can definitely see a lot of interesting stats. Now, another stipulation that I found, now of course this is Proxbox, but I'm assuming if you were to do VirtualBox, VMware, or E6i, or Hyper-V, one of the things that I found, if you leave the default um, VGA, 
It's only going to install and give you an 800 by 600 resolution interface, which is stupid, small, and really hard to see. In order to fix that, now of course this is with Proxmox, but I'm assuming it's probably the same way with the other uh, virtual hypervisors, is I had to use the virtual VGA adapter, which then gave me the option to go ahead and use the resolution of 1920 by 1080, so I'm able to actually see what the hell I'm actually doing. Another thing that I found is a gotcha when you were going through and looking at this. So with that being said, go ahead and you can bring this up. And you can definitely see, this is an extremely powerful. Now, granted, I don't understand a lot of this yet because I still have a lot of learning to do, but I will definitely be deep diving into this further because it's definitely a very powerful tool. So it'll tell you the connection, MAC address, the IP address of what it is, the account, where it's going, the destination ports, and this is, you know, basic people doing port scanning, script kitties, all the other stupid crap that people try to get into networks. It will definitely alert you of that. Um, one of the interesting things that I did actually see when I was going through and uh, taking a look at this, let me pull up that screenshot. One sec here, guys. So many 100 numbers. Anyways. Ah, yes, this is what I wanted to show you. So I was going through and I was looking at the login. I went under um, dashboard and then I went under NIDS alert counts. And you can see um, this is my IP address of my um, desktop that I'm on now, which is my, my main desk PC, my gaming and streaming machine. But it obviously was connecting to Spotify because I do use Spotify. That's my music service. I love it to death. But uh, one of the things that I found was kind of interesting was peer-to-peer uh, -peer e donkey connection request. Like, is e donkey still a thing? Is it still alive? I thought it was dead at this point in time. So I kind of giggled a lot when I saw that. I mean, e donkey was popular, if you want to even call it popular, during the like when Kaza and LimeWire was a thing when it was free before they went through and had a huge lawsuit. So, just something I wanted to inform you guys of. I, I, I giggled when I saw that. That was kind of humorous. But I digress. I just wanted to show you that. I th thought that that was quite funny. Um, radius, um, SMP traps, or uh, Kerbos attempts. I'm barely scratching the surface as to what I'm showing you uh, on this, but it is definitely very, very awesome software. Like I said, I've got this set up on Proxmox and a, a Security Onion, which has Snort and IDS and uh, IPS installed. So definitely really, really cool. I definitely highly recommend take, checking it out and taking a look at it. It's definitely a very, very powerful piece of software. I like it a lot. Um, currently, I'm using uh, four cores and 10 gigs of RAM. And then, of course, uh, like I said, I had to do the, um, oh, wait, no, wrong one. I'm using 16 gigs of RAM for Security Onion, four cores, and then I had to do the virtual graphics and GPU in order to get the resolution to, to pull correctly. And then, like I said, I've got the um, two network interfaces, one being the management and then one being the actual monitoring interface itself and if you uh, take a look here now that I'm poking around and I'm taking a look at things I'm using almost no well, 20 to 40 percent CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. I've actually noticed that this I mean due to the fact I'm using both IDS and IPS obviously the more um, modules that you install and configure the more um, 
resources you're going to need in order to be able to get the performance to work correctly. I, I pegged quite often on anything below about 8 gigs RAM. I had to go ahead and go up to 16. Now, granted, I've got 20 plus VMs installed, but I've only got about 10 actually in production. The rest are kind of testing or just playing with, or possibly I want to learn in the future. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to Snort and documentation that way you can take a look at it. I will also leave a link in the description for Security Onion. That way you guys can take a look at it and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, I'm still learning it myself, so I don't know everything about it, but I will definitely uh, feel free to reach out, ask any questions in the comments below, and I will leave a link in the description, and also you can reach out to me on my social media. Other than that, thanks and have a good day, guys. I'll talk to you later.